As you can see, there are many, many options when looking for a communication system. We will do our best to describe the differences and features present in the various options so you can determine which features you might be searching for, for your client, student, or loved one. This slide shows many of the high-tech electronic options offered by manufacturers and in applications. Here are some additional options. You might see something familiar on this slide. Some of you might have watched the show Speechless, the story of a boy with cerebral palsy who used a laser pointer and a static board to communicate with his friends, family, and others. Some people who use AAC were bothered by the fact that JJ didn't use an electronic voice output system. What we found interesting is the speed in which they were able to demonstrate AAC and the dynamic they were able to create between JJ and his communicative partners. See the board second from the left on the bottom? You might see something like this in a hospital. No customizations, very topic specific messages. Here are some additional options you may see in the AAC world, including low tech and mid tech systems. In our module today, we will discuss at length the multitude of options that are available for an AAC learner. SNUB stands for Spontaneous Novel Utterance Generation. It is based upon the access to the individual words and commonly used phrases of our everyday language. SNUB means that a child is learning the meaning of individual words and puts them together in any way they want to use language. When we think of typical language development, typically developing children are able to say whatever they want to say whenever they want to say it. That should be the goal for our children with complex communication needs with their AAC systems. SNUG applies to typical language development. Typical children do not predict what they're going to say across situations. They use SNUG when communicating. SNUG implies that an individual has access to single words across classes of language, such as verbs, descriptors, demonstratives, action words, and other parts of speech. AAC parallels normal language development in that as language develops, children begin to apply rules governing sequencing of language's basic units. Our core words may remain static, but our language is spontaneous. We're using a relatively small set of 400 to 500 core words to speak to each other, but we combine these words in novel ways across communication partners, communication contexts, and communication environments. Think back to module one of how combining these words in different ways creates phrasal verbs. We also know that people who use AAC prefer to be able to use SNUG. Statements by people who rely on AAC indicate that they do not find pre-stored sentences useful for most of what they want to say. And logged language samples of people who rely on AAC provide the strongest evidence on this point. In various contexts, including clinical settings as well as the natural environment, log data suggests that individuals communicating at the highest levels use pre-stored utterances for less than 2% of communication. So our implications are that pre-stored sentences and phrases are not efficient, nor do they really teach language. Therefore, our AAC systems, including low-tech and high-tech communication systems, need to allow for the teaching of single words and progress as a child progresses with their language. This short video will walk through some of the similarities and differences between the different user areas available in Unity. The user areas are available in both New Voice and Empower. Empower has a more user-friendly interface for editing. I'm so used to New Voice, I can make changes in my sleep. Oh well, more people like Empower, but they're available in both platforms. Okay, let's go through some of the user areas that we have here in Unity. I'm dealing with my um, emulator that I have on my laptop, uh, so it's not going to act specifically the same as it would on a device, but the user areas are the same. Um, it doesn't speak out loud, but you can see what it is that I'm looking at. So what I want to show you is, you know, we look at a user area and there's all of these buttons. This one has 144 buttons. Um, of all of the language that we'd like to, to use, some, some features of the device, some deleting icons, words, whatever, um, going into the camera, um, different functions, but all of the grammar and such. And we go, oh my gosh, 
way too many buttons. So what we want to do is we want to go back and say, okay, how many buttons is enough buttons? Let's look at 28 sequenced. Unity 28 has 28 locations and you think, oh my gosh, that's not bad, not bad at all. What I want to point out to you is that within Unity, we have our um, pronouns over here on the left, our verbs are green, We've got some grammar markers up here on the top with these black and white buttons. And these buttons that have icons that are filled with color are typically our core verbs. We need access to get to some of the fringe in our categories and we have access, access to some pages. But you might look at this and go, oh my gosh, 28 buttons, that's still a lot of buttons. Maybe too much. So what we can do is we can come over here, turn on Vocabulary Builder. Now what I've done is I've created a list of seven words. I and you, want, eat, drink, go, and stop. What you can do when you've got Vocabulary Builder on is you can hit an icon sequence repeatedly for practice, go through and use it while you're reading a book, while you're playing an activity, stop, stop, stop. And what happens is then, I've only got my seven words, what I can do now is I can turn off Vocabulary Builder and you'll notice my stop is still in the same place. Right? It doesn't move. So what we're doing is we're establishing a motor plan. Now we establish motor plans in many of the activities that we do. Tying our shoes, writing our names. These are motor plans that we establish all the time. What we want to make sure we're doing with AAC is finding an efficient motor plan that will allow us to get to the words that we need quickly without a lot of navigation. So when I look at this, I've got a significant amount of language, but I want more. I want to pick the area, the location area that is small enough for my little friend's finger, the teeny tiniest area that they can access so that I can get the most language with the least amount of navigation. So when we look at this now, we go to 45, and you'll notice now we've got a lot more of our pronouns. We still have our green action man for our verbs. We have more core language. We have access to a keyboard. We have our grammar markers, and now we've added conjunctions. Very important. We still have to get to our categories. Our fringe vocabulary might still be uh, limited. And I want you to notice that because we have fewer buttons, Bruce Baker has decided and Semantic Compaction decided we had to combine ride and go, get and color, drink and watch. And that gave us, there's another one, put and sleep. It gave us the opportunity to have access to those buttons um, on the, the home page, um, but there's still navigation that has to happen if I want to get to uh, nature words, I have to first click on colors, hit it again to get to my nature words. So there's an additional hit for navigation, but it's still pretty good. So we look at this 45 and we go, oh my goodness, there's still so many buttons. So what we can do again is we can pull up our vocabulary builder, make our list, turn it on, and those same words that I chose before, I and you, want, eat, drink, go, and stop. And I think in 45 I've also included juice and banana. So I've got nine words that I've chosen to get to for practice. I think when you looked before, as I was clicking on these screens, if I look at the vocabulary menu page, there are some activities that we do frequently where uh, some of the word choices have already been made for us. So you can always choose an activity that'll have words ready to go. I do like to make my own because if I have a word that I want to use, um, I want it to be available. So I tend to make my own lists because I know, I know exactly what I'm going to model as I go through the activity. Recasting offers additional feedback. When presented alone, interrogative choice and declarative recasts led to the highest rates of child repair. The results also showed that when children were presented with recasts and prompts to repair, the rate of repair increased. Spontaneous use of linguistic targets was significantly and positively related to conversational sequences, 
where the adult recast was followed by a child repair. These findings suggest that using different recast types and prompts to repair may be beneficial for spontaneous use of linguistic targets in this population. Here's an example of recasting with prompts for mishits on TD Snap Motor Plan 30 on the iPad. All done. I think you want to talk about people. Drink. That was a mishit. Let's go to your home page. People. That's right. We can look at pictures of Jude. Here. Again, you'll see recasts in therapy. We are working on navigating to the people page. I think you want to look at your people. So let's go home. Mm. That's right. People. Mm. Who should we talk about? Who should we look at? Dad. Yeah, mm. let's get a picture of Dad. Here is a video demonstrating recasting in therapy. What do you notice about the recast being used? What would you like to do? Oh, the Frozen game? Oh. oh, tell me more. game or do you want to play on my iPad? So you're saying yes, but do you want to play? I. Home. Yeah, we're playing at home right now. Yeah. Are you telling me you want to play your matching game from your home over here? Okay, let's play that one, and then maybe I can show you my matching game on the iPad. Let's do that. Here you will notice Devin communicating. I request for her to repair. Then I expand with a recast, following repair modeling sentence structure. You have something to say. have an idea. Yeah. So what do you want to do with mom? Mom and me. Yes. Mom and me, yes. Dad. Mom, me, yes, dad, and this game. Mom, me, yes, dad, this game. So I don't know if you're asking to take it 
to dad's house or if you want to play it right now. Yeah, so which one? Are you asking to take it to dad's or did you want to play it? You can let me know. This game. My. Dad. Oh, your dad. You want to take it to your dad. Oh. I. I. Take. Take. To. My. Dad. I take to my dad. Okay. Good idea. It's a good idea. I like your idea. There is a high incidence of motor planning difficulties in autism, and speech production requires proficient motor planning. Automaticity facilitates all motor planning, and the LAMP approach stresses motor planning and automaticity. Essentially, the hand becomes the articulator. We know that our students have deficits in sensory processing, auditory processing, and frequently severe verbal apraxia. So by keeping icons in the same location, this decreases the cognitive load. The brain doesn't have to worry about, okay, where do I find that word stop? Is it on the first page? Do I have to navigate five pages to find it? Or can I find it quickly when I need it? The word stop, like other single words, are located in a consistent location. Gail Van Tatenhove explained that motor learning is an important key in learning to use an AAC system. The greater the cognitive impairment, the more he or she may rely on motor planning to learn to use the system. With motor planning, we have consistent and relative permanence. The location of icons never changes. Motor plans provide loads of sensory feedback, which is linked to language learning. And finally, motor plans are formed through repetition that is meaningful. It's also frequent and intense. Because we use core words and highly motivating language, it's easy to create and encourage motor memory. Depending on the grid size, such as four by four versus eight by 10, there will be greater than three keystrokes needed to access page sets within the user area. The smaller the grid size, the increased navigation that's needed to move between pages. We really need to be thoughtful when we are selecting user areas and doing our evaluations to feature match. Here, if I wanted to use a describing word and I select description, I would then need to page down to find what I am looking for. Increased navigation might be too difficult for someone with poor memory skills. This down arrow scrolls down to the next window. A person using this device would need to have the memory and object permanence to remember how to move through the device to find their intended target. We continue to scroll down. And more scrolling. And more scrolling. And so I have now completed six keystrokes to activate the describing word different. This doesn't mirror conversation in real time, nor is it efficient for the AAC user. One might argue words can be moved up to the top of the list if used often, but there is only so much real estate for these words. They cannot all be on the top of the list. Also, if we move words around, we pose increased difficulty for teachers, therapists, and communication partners who are trying to teach the words, model the language, or prompt the user to a possible target. For many users, we may want to consider other user area options within TD Snap that allow for more efficient language, other user areas within their platforms, or possibly other manufacturers, depending on the need of our AAC learner. So while the focus of this activity is to help you better understand how to use and implement a set plan, I do want to discuss ethical dilemmas that we might encounter in the evaluation process. As I mentioned, the school district offered an iPad with WordPower 60 Basic. During this time, a private evaluation was completed by myself and at that time, I recommended the NovaChat 10 with WordPower 60 Basic. These systems sound similar, and they were made to appear similar to Logan's parents during the set process. But there was a mismatch of features during the evaluation in terms of what Logan needed. For example, the area of visual feedback is circled for both the NovaChat 10 on the left, which is considered DME, as well, for the, as, well as for the iPad with WordPower on the right. 
Visual feedback is when the icon on the device is highlighted at the same time as touching a button. In this case, it was recommended that Logan benefits from visual feedback. However, the clinician completing this assessment inappropriately made statement, statements about the iPad's features to Logan's parents and misrepresented a feature. As you can see in the column on the right, it states that there is blue highlighting for two seconds on the iPad. This highlighting is delayed and doesn't occur until after a button is touched. It also does not change to other colors, such as red. These features are not the same, and we are basically comparing apples to oranges. One consideration that was not made during the set process was Logan's vision needs. Logan has reportedly failed repeated eye examinations at his school. He demonstrates variability in his ability to attend to incoming stimuli. He also brings items very close to his face to examine them. This includes use of any dynamic display communication device. Logan bends near a display and brings it less than 10 inches from his face and may tilt the device to look at the icons on the screen. Many people with Angelman syndrome can have cortical visual impairment, which can affect walking, balance, coordination, and behavior. Logan had diagnoses of CVI and was scheduled for vision testing due to suspected convergence issues. He also has widespread sensory deficits and difficulties with pressure, grading, and force with the icons on his screen. So he would repetitively tap or hit icons and often miss hit buttons on his device, which resulted in breakdowns in communication. Logan's vision and sensory status were not fully assessed during the set process, which is absolutely an ethical dilemma. Financially, there were also limitations on what the school could provide to Logan as they had a district-wide licensing agreement with iPad apps for the application word power, and it would require a significant financial purchase on part of the district for durable medical equipment. During the set process, it was in the best interest of the therapists completing the evaluation to strongly consider an iPad app and to make the iPad work for Logan. However, as we all know, it's hard to fit a square peg into a round hole. It is likely with the best intentions that when we are put into difficult situations, we are trying to make a certain AAC system work for a child, but we must also consider what the long-term impact might be when we don't carefully consider all necessary features. Light et al. discussed in a paper in 2005 what considerations must be made when looking into customization of a vocabulary. There is a large range of concepts. People, actions, objects, places, social words, and questions we really should be thinking about personal core. By assessing how reinforcing certain activities are, we can determine what activities and objects might work well in therapy. The reinforcer assessment is an inventory checklist designed to determine an individual's motivators and reinforcers that can be used to intervene in therapy to elicit joint attention. The goal is to target or make imageable core words by determining what items or activities are meaningful or if the activity itself evokes imageability. Let's take a look at what the reinforcer assessment looks like. Here is an example of the reinforcer assessment or shared interest list. It can be completed by the caregiver, therapist, or teacher and it acts as a dynamic PDF that can be attached to an email and completed interactively on the computer or printed out and filled out with paper and pencil. By quickly marking preferred activities, you can have materials ready for a session. Notice there are objects that might be more exciting than others, rewards that increase motivation and social reinforcers that might encourage a client throughout an activity. Consider these things especially when a task might be more difficult or new. Ask the client or the parent what things are their favorites. What core words are most naturally occurring with the favorite things? If playing a ball is a child's favorite activity, you might use my turn, your turn, stop, go, fast, slow, up, and down. So really, reinforcers are shared interests, and shared interests help drive joint attention and reciprocity of language. Learning can only happen when a child is interested. If he's not interested, it's like throwing marshmallows at his head and calling it eating. Don't make assumptions on what might be interesting or fun for each patient we work with. Maybe something different. 
we assume that because we think it's fun that it'll bring in attention. There are kids who don't have interest in crafts or comic books. It has to be something they are interested in. And if they aren't interested, they aren't learning. Because if a child is not interested, it's like throwing marshmallows at a kid's head and calling it eating, just like the quote said. Thank you, Katrina Guttelbin. When it comes to customization, it is important to be mindful of each user and determine relevant and meaningful words without taking out the language integrity of the AAC program. Adding a lot of vocabulary and specialized phrases and items will bog down the system requiring additional navigation. I worked with a client whose mother customized the entire device. It was beautiful and had some logic in how it was programmed, but she had moved and changed many of the group's folders, which resulted in decreasing the ability of the client to navigate to their intended message. As a seasoned clinician, my motor plan was on the fritz. It took me a lot of effort to find vocabulary I knew was already in the device. So consider that when customizing a client's device. This rubric is designed to help speech language pathologists compare AAC apps on the dimension of language and communication. It should be used in conjunction with more comprehensive checklists that address a variety of app features, such as those developed by Gosnell and Marfilis and Foner. When selecting AAC apps for an individual, this rubric should be used in the context of a comprehensive AAC evaluation, which considers a range of strategies and tools. Here is the second page of the rubric. Asking yourself these questions helps a clinician determine if the app is designed to meet their needs. How well does this app support expression to share, tell, or make a comment? How well does this app support the request for information? How well does this app support the repair of communication breakdowns? How well does this app support the delivery of information? And how well does this app support the ability to prevent emotional breakdowns, minimize distress, calm oneself, and regain composure? Finally, how well does this app support the most frequently used words? and the last page of the rubric. Once you tally up the points, you can compare the totals between apps to see which one is best for your client. So when do we use photographs in AAC systems? There is no absolute rule about when to use photos. Photographs are considered easier to learn. However, nouns are highly imageable and easier to discriminate visually. Customizing a device with photographs of an individual's personal core is a good way to make the device meaningful. Notice, if you fill a page with photos of items, what will that page look like? Photographs take up the entire icon location, eliminating a strong contrast between the figure and background. The boxes could start to look like dark blobs, and we have to be cautious of this when customizing a device and deciding where and how to edit. Here is an example of a client's game page. She has some phrases such as, let me do it, no cheating, roll it, and push it down, as well as noun items of game choices. There's also a link on the bottom right corner to a second game page. We have to consider real estate when editing a device. When interests change, what happens to old items? And where do you put the new items? We must create new motor plans. We should consider growth of a system early on so we know where we hope to move with vocabulary and programming over the years.